So now we're on this worksheet. This is adding and subtracting fractions. So it's not just adding, but it's also subtracting, right? But it's not just subtraction. What else is different about this worksheet? The denominators, the denominators are different. So this is where we're gonna do what we did today in terms of finding the lowest, lowest what? Common, either called multiple or lowest common denominator. They're the same thing, right? They say lowest common denominator because it's in the denominator. But I want you to think lowest common multiple. What multiples do they have in common? So here, number one, so first thing is, I see adding and subtracting, so I know right away I need to have common denominators in order to combine. They are not common, so I must change it in order to combine them. And we have the power of our pen, and we have the power of our brains to do this. So here, what? so I look at the four, and I look at the five, and say, what multiple do they have in common? 20. 20. The multiples of four are four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Multiples of five are five, 10, 15, 20. They both have 20 in common. So because they have 20 in common, I'm gonna write down the new denominator, which is 20. So math is really awesome because you can change things to whatever you want it to be, but you have to do it within the rules of math, right? So here, four and five, the lowest common multiple is 20. So to go from four to 20, I asked myself, what did I have to do to go from four to 20? I needed to multiply by five. I needed to multiply by five, four times five to get to 20. Whatever you do, the bottom fraction you must do to the top. So therefore the top, I also need to multiply by, by five. So therefore seven times five is 35. This is what we call equivalent fractions, right? So equivalent fractions meaning 35 over 20 is actually the, exactly the same thing as seven over four, just it's a multiple of it, that's all. But if you were to measure it or draw it or put it on a number line, they're actually the same exact quantity. They're called equivalent fractions. We're not changing the quantity, we're just rewriting it. So to go from five to 20, what do I need to multiply by? Four. So five times four will give me 20. Whatever I do the bottom, I must do to the top. So I put that there. So eight times four is 32. Great, the, the power of memorizing your multiplication table, right? Right, so now they're in a different form. They're the same animals, just written differently. So now what do I do? Now I can combine them. Now I can subtract them because why do, can I do that now? We have the same denominator. So, but damn, the bottom becomes 20, right? You keep the denominator the same, right? So we always keep the denominators the same once we have common denominators. And the top, we could either add or subtract depending on the problem. What's 35 minus 32? Three, thank you. So the answer is three over 20 is five. We're just gonna go across. Can I combine these as is? No. no, because the sign is subtraction. So with the rule of adding and subtracting, you have to have common denominators. With multiplying and dividing, just giving you a foreshadow of what is to come, you do not need common denominators. It's only for adding and subtracting. So here, because they're not the same, I look at the denominator and I ask myself, what is the lowest common multiple? What does two and seven have in common? It's a multiple? 14. 14, right? So you guys are getting faster at this, right? So one way of determining lowest common multiples is you multiply them together, right? Or you could do it in your head. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, seven, 14, right? You can list out the multiples in your head or you can multiply those two together to get a multiple. Okay, what do I do next? I ask myself, what do I need to multiply two by to get 14? Seven. So I put a times seven there. 
If I do that to the bottom, I must do to that to the top. So if I multiply this by seven, what do I get? 21. And these are called what? Three half and 21 over 14, these are called? Equivalent fractions. Have I changed the value of these fractions? No, the values are exactly the same. This is why it's legit to do this in math, right? You're not changing the numbers, you're just rewriting it, right? You're not changing the value of it. Nine sevens, let's create its equivalent fraction. Seven times what a what a gives you 14? Two. And then the, so I multiply the top by two, and what do I end up getting? 18. What do I do next? Okay, subtract or whatever. What does the bottom become? 14. So I like to write down the obvious first, the one I don't have to think much. And what's 21 minus 18? Three. Right. Can I simplify that? No, sorry, Bob, I cannot. So that becomes my final answer. Right. Let's do one more as a class, number nine. And I'm going to do it a little bit faster where I'm not going to write down everything. I'm trying to try to do things in my head. Again, we want to get fast at this. Right? Because we're going to use this later again. <clears throat> Subtraction. Lowest common denominator is 15. Because 3 and 5 has 15 as the lowest common multiple. 3 times what gives me 15? 5. 4 times 5 is 20. So notice I don't even need to write down the 5 and the bottom 5. I'm not going to waste time because as you get faster at this, you don't have to write everything down, right? 5 times what gives me 15? 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. Keep the denominator the same. The top becomes 14. I can't simplify it anymore. But am that becomes my final answer. So notice in this work that I did, I didn't have to do times 5 times. I didn't have to write down all those things. No shame in the game of writing things down. I'm just letting you know, eventually you'll get to the point where you don't have to write so many things down. You can start doing things in your head, right? So again, let me give you guys two minutes. I'm gonna give you guys two minutes to try to solve, to do as many questions as you can.